Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television is sponsored by Potash Corp of White Springs. Potash Corp, helping nature provide. This is a public affairs presentation of Florida Gateway College. My name is Mike McKee, and my guest on the program, as you can see, represent the Park Service. Uh, we have Andrea Thomas, who is a Park Service Specialist, and Kim Rivers, a Park Ranger. They represent Stephen Foster Folk Cultural Center up in White Springs. And if you know Stephen Foster, you know it must be close to the Folk Festival, which is happening this weekend up in White Springs. We're going to talk all you want to know about the Stephen Foster Folk Center and the Folk Festival this weekend. We'll do that when we come back. Don't go away. Your day starts before your feet touch the floor. You listen and encourage, plan and schedule, and work hard for the ones you love. You inspire creativity, help with homework, and somehow still find time to do your own. You were an example every day, investing in her future and yours. Florida Gateway College. Start here, go anywhere. Welcome back to Perspective here on Florida Gateway College Television. The 64th annual Florida Folk Festival is this weekend in White Springs. To talk about the Folk Festival, and my goodness, there is plenty to do up in White Springs this weekend. It's Andrea Thomas, who is a Park Service Specialist at the Stephen Foster Folk Culture Center, and Kim Rivers, former, former storyteller. Now she's a park ranger with the Park Service, and first time on the program. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, for those who are new, and I know the boss, my new boss, uh, who's the president of this college, has never been to the Florida Folk Festival. This is going to be brand new. He does want to go up there this weekend and see what's going on. What is the Folk Festival? How did it get started and, and what's it all about? Well, the Folk Festival is actually the oldest state-run festival in the nation. And it's been 64 years now, and we'll be super excited to have your new boss come up and check it out. But it is, it is exactly that. It's a Folk Festival, and we celebrate the best of Florida's music, arts, culture, food, anything and everything that makes Florida, Florida. Now, Kim, you, uh, I didn't mention this, but you're, well, I did mention you were a st former storyteller, uh, but you still probably tell stories. Uh, oh, yes, I do. Uh, so tell me, you, you, you worked this festival as a storyteller for years. What, what type of things did you do when you, were, when you were performing? I enjoyed the transformative atmosphere, for one thing. I mean, uh, look what led to, from that participation, I moved from Tampa to little, tiny, beautiful White Springs. I left freelancing storytelling to become a park ranger because Florida Folk Festival changes folks, whether they realize it or not. So in my participation there, I would have beautiful days. I'd have one 30-minute set, and the rest of the day, I would enjoy the community that's there. There's a real feeling of homecoming, even if you've never met anybody that's at the festival. There's a larger community of folk from around the state, and everyone that visits is welcomed. And you'll be surprised that almost instantly you're gonna feel like you're with your family. People embrace each other. Let's put it like this. It's the kind of place where if you're going to lose your cell phone or your wallet, lose it there. Those kind of folks. Well, and it, and it takes, the, from Andrea, and you've done this a couple years uh, now, but this kind of takes you back to the days when there weren't cell phones. And it's almost, it's almost probably better that you leave your cell phone in your car. And, and wouldn't you say? I would, because you really get to immerse yourself in Florida and everything that we're offering. I mean, the activities that we have, the music, just walking by and hearing a jam or you know, all sorts of things. But yes, I would definitely recommend just being there and not necessarily on the phone. <laughs> now, this is a three-day festival, it correct? Is. Mm -hmm. uh, so it happens Friday the 27th. Uh, there will be some uh, entertainment going on that day and oh, yes. arts and crafts and, and food and storytelling. And, and then Saturday's the same thing, yes. a little more, probably a little more activity. Uh, you have how many stages? Uh, there is 
there will be 10 stages, I believe. We had 12, and so we've sort of condensed and made some larger, changed up the children's area, but I believe there's 10 actual stages, but yet we have two others that are workshop and jam areas. Okay, and so w if you want to go to see some entertainment, I mean, the highlight, you've got Arlo Guthrie. Oh, yes. Who is a legend in uh, folk music. Uh, you've got Billy Dean, you've got Jim Stafford, you've got several uh, performers who uh, have played the event before, but it's just great music. So you can, so you can basically see something from the time you get to the park to the time you leave. Oh yes, the gates open every day at 8 a.m. and then music will start around 10 and then really and truly we, we go all day and we'll go until the wee hours of the, the night. To, we rock into the night. Oh yes we do, 10 to 11 p.m. You know the, the features will start around 5 30 6 p.m. but during the day we've got stages open, the food, the jam tents, workshops. Uh, now tell me about some of the workshops. Uh, you, you, can people learn about mandolins or can they learn about yes. what, what so anything you if there's something dealing with folk culture mm -hmm. you'll be able to see it up there this weekend oh definitely uh, one example for a workshop is billy dean does a songwriting workshop and so he will actually sit there with you and well with other people too but he will do a songwriting workshop and the same thing john McEwen is doing a workshop this year uh, Jim Stafford does workshops. And for those of you who don't know who Jim Stafford is, you, you got all you got to do is say spiders and snakes, and and everybody realizes who uh, Jim Stafford was. Um, you can actually, uh, and I encourage you to Google Jim Stafford, uh, Google Billy Dean, Google Arlo Guthrie, and see, and then go to YouTube and see some of their performances because I, uh, Stafford was a staple on the Smothers Brothers show back in the day uh, and so but we're gonna I'll tell you what we're gonna do we're gonna show you a little bit of video that was shot up I think two years ago up at the Stephen Foster Folk Culture Center during the festival uh, and here we have the the tower at Stephen Foster there are there's some gongs in there that uh, go off every half hour correct <laughs> the no, the tower. Bells, the Carillon Tower we're actually the uh, world's largest tubular bell system <laughs> And, and you look at this, I, I shot this video and it made me hungry just to, oh, yeah. that's why I stayed there a lot of, for quite a while. We have so much food. Wear your buffet pants, there's food from around the world that represents every area of diversity that Florida holds. And I heard know? that there's going to be a Cuban uh, yeah. person there yes. that's going to have some Cuban food. So if you want authentic Cuban food, the Cuban culture will be represented at oh, Stephen definitely. Foster. Because the folk life area actually will represent the Miami-Dade area this year. Now you've got uh, awesome. doing wool, mm -hmm. spinning, weaving, loom work, and it—I mean—it takes you back because the the ladies get in period costume, and basically the 1800s when they when this is what how they did they didn't go to Walmart, oh, yeah. and here the, this is also a weekend for kids. There's several, hundreds of activities for Definitely kids. Definitely family, family friendly, and at the children's area there will be activities, arts and crafts, performances and workshops. Let's, let's listen to this just for a second. Also, demonstrations going on at, in the park. This this gentleman is making a log cabin by himself. Yes, Willie the Lowson. He'll be back. He'll be at the uh, Florida Remembered area. And uh, if you want to, if you're thinking about it, uh, he probably could tell you where you need to put the the holes and oh, how yes. you need to cut the logs. And, and what you'll see is a representation of the past, but also newfangled concepts and crafts. We're going to have a man there making surfboards live. Oh. And this is kind of cool, interesting, someone using driftwood mm -hmm. and making animals or... <laughs> that looks like a man. If it, but anyway, I mean, this is really neat stuff. So if you're looking to, to get something, uh, one of a kind, unique gift uh, that deals with Florida folk life, here uh, you can walk up to people. That I think they were selling violins and mandolins and this young man was just happened to play and I'm sure uh, spur of the moment that they'll play. Oh, they all will. And if people want to bring their instruments, they can, and people will jam with them. And what about pets? Are pets allowed in the park? Pets are not allowed. Service animals are welcome, but, but people's pets are not. 
not permitted into the festival. And you see, here's some original artwork. Uh, looks like the Swanee River, uh, but it's great stuff, one of a kind. Again, if you want a unique gift for someone for a birthday or for Christmas, um, and you, you mentioned 10 stages. Some of the stages look like this. Some of the right. stages look like where the little kids were playing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would suggest, and I know you would, dress very casually. Oh, yes. It will be warm. Wear comfortable shoes. Uh, we are ADA accessible in, in the areas, uh, but definitely comfortable shoes, sunscreen. Sunscreen is a good one. Now, uh, this, this festival is open. It, one of the dates, it's open the 27th at what time? The eight? 27th, every morning, 27th, 28th, and 29th, it'll open at 8 a.m. And close probably at And we'll close 11, when we, when when we they're finish, done. about when 11 p.m., 12. Now, you mentioned that there's no camping in there, but the performers right. are going to camp in, mm -hmm. in there. So you will have full camping for performers, but folks are going to have to find a place to stay. Uh, I guess the hotel, is there a hotel even in? There is a hotel. Is the Telford open? No. No, sir. No, sadly, the Telford is closed. We do have the White Springs bed and breakfast, but I believe they're already full. I'm sure um, they are. The, the next closest would be Swanee County's uh, America's Best Value, right there on 75. But there's, you know, we've got tons of folks and performers staying in Lake City in different hotels. You might things. run into a performer in, oh, yeah. in the hotel bar. Who knows? Uh, let's see. Uh, tickets are $25 a day. In advance, yes. In you advance. can buy them online now. Uh, and, it's, and that would be how you would suggest people do it? It's $50. It's, it's $50 in advance online. For, for all weekend? Mm -hmm, for all weekend. And then at the gate, it's $30 a day and 60 for the weekend. So it's really not too bad. And then this year online, we're actually offering a $25 VIP weekend parking. So you can park inside the gate. And youth price is five dollars for one day or a full weekend. Mm -hmm. And what is a youth? Are you hearing me? Six is to it? sixteen. Six to sixteen. So if you wanted to come up and, and, and spend a couple of days, it's not that expensive. And youngins under six are free. Yes, Let me ask are. you, that, what what part of this is the the park service wanting to connect with those kids again? Or because you're this this type of music, it's not what kids are listening to. Some of it will be. We've got some hip hop and rap. Oh, do you? We do. We have even open mic freestyles. We've got some street artists coming in. Um, we the surfboard making. We've got different drumming. But so you are trying to reach that younger, we are. younger mm -hmm. dynamic. Uh, or we try to make it available for everyone and offer something at every age, every demographic, everybody who loves Florida and that joins and comes to the festival that there's something for them. Well, let's, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, I think we've got some video for those of you who have never heard of, and I can't believe you had never, had never heard of Arlo Guthrie. Uh, but let's, uh, we, we got some video on to show you who Arlo Guthrie is. Let's roll that tape. don't know the city of New Orleans that's one of his uh, biggest hits uh, back in the day so Arlo Guthrie will be there on Sunday Saturday night, night. Saturday, <laughs> night. Saturday <laughs> night and he'll be the last performer of the evening on Saturday night yeah. now uh, for those of you who are familiar with country music Billy Dean is another performer who will be at the uh, Florida Folk Festival I actually shot some video of him doing one of his little uh, talks with uh, some folks but Billy Dean is from the town of Quincy in the Panhandle and let's listen a little bit of what Billy Dean has to offer time you will find what you long for love that's written in the stars and when you finally do i think you will see it's so 
I shot that video, but that, that was so cool because you're walking around the park, you're taking video, and you're looking around, and all of a sudden you walk up on Billy Dean telling everybody how he wrote Broken Heart, and then you're hearing it. You're hearing how everything happened, and it's really a unique experience. I don't think, again, this is a unique experience for anyone to, to actually come up and watch that. It truly is, and, and the fact that they independently will work with people, too, in their workshops and during their their performances that will actually talk to people and, and yeah it's not like you got to have a VIP pass right. to get back and see these people they're very accessible I mean you don't want to make a, a you know you don't want to stalk one of these performers but we ask it, you not to yeah please don't stalk them but uh, do uh, talk to them and, and uh, oh, yes. but be mindful of their time and, and what they're what they're having to do so and the last but not least is, is Jim Stafford again I encourage everyone to if you've never heard of these folks Google them Look at them on YouTube. They're all on YouTube, uh, and you can see them and their performances so you have a better understanding of uh, who you're going to see this weekend at the Stephen Foster Folk Culture, Culture Center in White Springs, Florida. Let's look a at a little bit of Jim Stafford. And uh, I want to do a song for you, friends. It's kind of fun to do. And this song names cities and states, places all over. And every time I name a place you've been, I'd like for you just to holler out, and we're going to see where all of our travelers are sitting. Want to try it? Here we go. I've been everywhere, boy, I said, I've been everywhere. I've traveled the deserts bare, and I breathe that mountain air. I've traveled, I've had my share, I said, I've been everywhere. I've been to Reno, Chicago, Fargo, Minnesota, Buffalo, Toronto, Winslow, Sarasota, Wichita, Tulsa, Ottawa, and Oklahoma, Bangor, Maine, Baltimore, Gavador, Amarillo, Asheville, Nashville, Greenville, Waterville, Boston, Charleston, Dayton, and Andalusia. I've been to Springfield, Missouri. I've been to Washington, Houston, Kingston, Louisiana, Monterey, Faraday, Santa Fe, Texas, Pan, I've been to Rock, Black like Rock, Little Rock, Calabasas, Tennessee, and Hennessy, and Chicopee, and Austin, Lusa, Great Lake, Devil Lake, Great Lake, Beach, Lake, Maryville, Louisville, Vanderbilt, if you will. I've been to Harrison, Arkansas. Woo. I've been to Pasco, Greenville, Lakers, Rear, Shreveport, Hackensack, Cadillac, Comeback, Davenport, Idaho, Jellico, Big Gore, Narcissus, Big Gallo, Pasadena, Catalina, Swatomina, Pittsburgh, Parksburg, Galesburg, Colorado, Elksburg, Rexburg, Vicksburg, and El Dorado. I've been to Blue Eye. <laughs> Here we go. I've been up a hill, down a hill, around the bend, through the middle, and a tree, and on and in, down track, and on back, and in the mountains, in the valleys, in the coast, by some mountains, in the ocean, by the water, place or two, I shouldn't order. You can stop and stare and ask if there's anywhere I haven't been, and I'll have to say, my friend, that I've been everywhere. It don't sound like much, but it was the dickens to learn. Oh, yeah! Obviously, Jim has got a, a gig up in Branson, Missouri, but a uh, very talented uh, music uh, musician and writer uh, who's written uh, quite a few songs, and he's going to be performing those songs up at Stephen Foster this weekend. If there's something that you can tell someone who's never been to the festival, what would it be? What would be your thing for them to... Get? Come once, get hooked, come back, and you'll find it like others. It becomes a tradition. Uh, well, it's Memorial Day not weekend. To be missed. It's Memorial Day weekend, so you have time to recover <laughs> on, on Monday, if you know, because it is it is it's a unique experience for the weekend, uh, and to go up there and then on on Monday be able to take the day off and and kind of recoup and then go back to work on Tuesday. Get away you? from that passive entertainment. You know, get out, get involved, make a friend. Well, and, and do it live. The, if you've never been to the park, I know. If you haven't grown, if you didn't grow up here, you didn't take a field trip in elementary school to Stephen Foster Folk Culture Center. So, if you never went and you never experienced it, if you didn't go up during the Christmas time with the lights up there, uh, or you, uh, the tractor show that's there every year, the genie contest, or any of the stuff that happens during the year, or the quilt show, and there's so much stuff that happens up there. But you need to go up and see it once because it really is a tribute to Stephen Foster. It is, and and me as a transplant coming in, all the different events just blew me away, but Folk Festival has been one of those that has come really close to the heart because it is, it is like a giant family. And even like Jim started a couple, Jim Stafford started coming a couple years ago 
and he loves it so much he keeps coming back and he has become one of the family but that's how it is we we are the hidden gem and we treat you like family when you come in well and again it's white springs is a neat place to to go anyway um just uh love it. it reminds me of mayberry the the smallness of it it's right on the swanee river so you get to see the swanee river if you've never been to the high cliffs of the swanee river you know you some places down south are or lower lower Swanee here you and you, you get to see the spring house and all oh, that yeah. stuff that, that's at Stephen Foster uh, again it's uh, $50 for the weekend uh, it is $25 a day yeah. if you want to come up in uh, advance the, it, do this in advance if you if you're gonna come up this weekend and go it's gonna be a little more expensive so I suggest you go online and, and order your tickets uh, again uh, if you'd like more information about the Stephen Foster Folk Culture Center or the fi the festival it is happening this weekend. The number up at the, the park is 397-2733. Uh, or you can go to floridastateparks.org forward slash folkfest to learn more about it. And there's, uh, I guess that that's this year's ticket. Yes, Which, you can buy your tickets right there. All right. <laughs> Ladies, thank you for being on the program. And I look forward you. to seeing you up at uh, White Springs and hope to see you at White Springs and supporting this uh, Florida Folk Festival, the 64th annual Florida Folk Festival in White Springs. Till next time, I'm Mike McKee. So long.